There is a podcast no one asked for. A podcast you never knew you didn't want. Three beers in. This is the podcast. I anticipate a deeply religious experience. <laughs> Welcome, listener. Thank you for joining us on Three Beers In. So it's just Cutter and Ross. Hey, tonight. So sit down, have a couple drinks with us. Uh, we're drinking Red Horn, the House United Coffee Stout. Yeah, from Red Horn Coffee House and Brewing Company. Pretty excited. Uh, you really wanted to uh, do some Red Horn, right? I, I've, I've wanted to do some smaller breweries that you can't just, like, you have to go to the brewery and yeah. get their stuff. But, yeah, I've had some really good stuff from them. I've not had anything bad from them. They're all really, really good. Yeah, and it's a pretty cool place. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, really cool place. I heard their coffee sucks, though. <laughs> not not really. I don't. I don't. I haven't heard that ever. You just don't like coffee, Ross. I don't. But this <laughs> is made with their... Uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of do like tea. Uh, I don't re- usually drink it, though. But this is made with their cold brew coffee, so mm-hmm. hopefully it'll be a bit different, maybe. But we'll see. You want to open it up? Uh, let's go ahead and open this thing yeah. up. Oh, it smells really good. <laughs> you say that every time. That sounds good. It's not a bad Dark. Oh, yeah, well, it's definitely dark. I mean, Super tan head. You can definitely get the coffee notes off of the nose, too. Oh, yeah. I've had a couple of their imperial stouts. I had their yeah. cereal stout, which was... Uh, I believe it was subliminal a, dreams. Yeah, subliminal dreams. Yeah. yeah, had a bunch of Lucky Charms on the front. Yeah, it didn't taste much like Lucky Charms. It did though. not taste like. <laughs> Tasted like alcohol to me. It was subliminal. Or... Oh, I guess. Oh, they were the Lucky Charms were subliminal. All right. That is soft, but I really like it. The oh, coffee yeah? comes through on the finish. Malty, roasty. Oh, roasty. No, I guess that's good for a coffee studded. Yeah, it definitely is. Mm. Yeah, get that coffee, but it's. It's subtle. There it goes. Yeah. On, on the, the finish. Yeah, on the finish. It gets a lot bolder as it progresses. First impressions? I'm going to need more. More what? Just more? More to drink. More. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, It's got that coffee. So yeah. It's, I, it's smooth and it's it's well balanced. I like how it, it tapers into the coffee. Like it's, it's not... It's not really rough. It doesn't have like old smoke and tobacco and hair flavors. <laughs> Coming through. Doesn't feel like somebody tapped their cigarette over, no, the, over the tank. it does not. <laughs> so that's one thing. It's a bit easy drinking, which it should be because I think it's only 4.6%. Yeah, it's not super high at all. Let me see. They do some super high alcohol Oh, stuff. they do. Like the subliminal dreams that we were talking about was like, what, 8.9 or 9? 8.9. When I was there, when I picked this up, I tried their bourbon barrel aged uh, uh, suburban ninja. Yeah. And that was yeah, I've, I've 11 seen. something. <laughs> Double digit ABV, but it was really good also. Definitely more of those barely notes. But the Suburban Ninja is a completely different style of beer too. Yeah. I think this would do well with the little barreling. Though it might not survive it since it's such a low ABV. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I like on the nose of this. It smells like a sweet coffee. Like you get it does. That, you get yeah. that cold brew and it's like it's got a little bit of sugar on it. And it just smells like. This is this is coffee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> certainly but, is. But it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that punch you in the face like some of your some of the oatmeal stouts are do do it less. Yeah, but it's all like uh, like some of your coffee stouts, even some of your milk stouts, they can really punch yeah. you with like the roasty. Roasty, the yeah, exactly. This, this doesn't really have yeah. that. Yeah, this is uh like I said, easy drinking, and on a hot day, you might have. A, I mean, I know you would have one, but. <laughs> It doesn't, Regular matter, it, person doesn't matter, might, it doesn't matter what type of, what time yeah. of day or how hot it is or how cold it is. I'll drink a stout. This, if you were looking for a Sunday morning coffee replacement, like this. Speaking actually, of morning, this you know, this reminds me of a KBS, which Kentucky breakfast stout. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not nearly as heavy. Like, yeah. A, a, ABV on that's what. Yeah. So what about Redhorn? Based out of Cedar Park. Yeah, exactly. There's some, that's there's some, it. There's some good beer yeah. coming out of Cedar Park right now. There's some really good stuff. Well, they got Red Horn. They got Whitestone, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Fifth Element soon, but that's going to be in Leander. I'm not sure. A what else? further north. 
Yeah, that'd be sweet. Anyway, something. at least oh. two really good breweries coming out yeah, of Cedar Park. Yeah, yeah, two. <laughs> there you go. All right, so Zach Gardner was good enough to email me back. He's their head brewer. He's been with them since the beginning, and he sort of gave me his life story in brewing, basically. Where's he been around? So he started home brewing uh, December of 2009 during his senior year at UT. Longhorns. Yeah. But yeah, he says he caught the brewing bug after a tour of the original Live Oak, where it used to be like in an old meatpacking plant or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and they had still had the hooks up. It was, he said it was a field trip for the final day of his Czech culture class. Didn't Mike talk about Which called Beer, Pubs, and Robots, which it wasn't it wasn't Matt with the Beer Museum, but it was his My, wife. Oh, oh it, was, it was her? Yeah. Okay. It was uh, Jen. Oh, I, I thought it was Mike from Live Oak that had said that they used to do that. No. Nah. Well, pretty sure it was the beer museum because she took the class, I think. That's right. I, I remember the story. I just couldn't remember who, who the story was. Yeah. Was I he, assumed it was Live Oak. <laughs> after, after I read his email, I was like, oh, that sounds familiar. And it's, I think she took the class just because it was called Beer Pubs and Robots. Butt chugging Hans Pills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Zach. So he was at Live Oak, their old location. There was an Austin Homebrew Supply sticker on the wall. And somehow that hooked him. Just that sticker. So amazing. Advertising works, guys. (laughs) Advertising works. And so, and he said he's always been in the cooking and decent with sciences. So it just kind of lended itself there. He brewed his first batch of beer with a Midwest Supplies kit that he got on eBay. He remembers the kit. Yeah, I think you, everybody you remember remembers. Your first kit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he said he paid eighty dollars or something for a bucket, a brewing book, and a DVD, a plastic stirring spoon, and a siphon. Oh, and some small packages of sanitizer and cleaners, cleansers. It sounds like he got ripped off. <laughs> yeah, it gets it's expensive, you know. Starting out, it's not cheap. So uh, but, but you kept on going. It was like for a bucket and a DVD. Yeah. And, and a stirring yes. spoon. All right. And some yeah. other stuff. <laughs> he says he, the first thing he did, he did a partial boil extract, which is the same thing that, that Clint did. Too bad he can't be here. So he did uh, the partial extract recipe from Charlie Papazian's book, Complete Joy of Homebrewing. It's a very popular homebrew book. But he, he did a, a porter called Goat Scrotum Porter. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't blame him. It's like if I was flipping through a book and I saw that, <laughs> Goat Scrotum. Yeah. I Which that was, one. That's the it, one I want. In that book, I, I was kind of disappointed. It's a lot of extract stuff and very little all grain. So, But yeah, and to, to make it his own, he said he boosted the gravity with some brown sugar. It's not a good idea. <laughs> but a lot of first-time brewers do that. Sugar equals alcohol. Anyway, and then he added toasted pecans and vanilla beans. He said it was relatively drinkable. (laughs) And so that's when the obsession began. That was when, uh, I mean, your your first porter. Yeah, I tried to. It was not as drinkable. It It was okay. Uh, Tony loved it. If we, yeah, (laughs) if we let it sit a long time, I think it might have cleaned up. You had a yeast problem with yours, though. Uh, Yeah. Uh, yeast yeast was working. Yeah. <laughs> yeast was working. Wasn't working. Was working. Yeah. It was tough. I think I had just problems from the beginning. I don't know. So anyway, fast forward a year and a half, he says, maybe two. He met John, the principal partner at Redhorn. At his first job out of college, they were working for a local home builder and residential land developer. John was a purchasing manager brought in from another group and was only with the company for a short period of time. Fortunately, though, he had some chance to try the beer that Zach would bring in every Thursday. He says he was brewing two or three times a week, and that was far more than he and his friends could drink. So he'd always give it away at the office for those that wanted it in exchange for feedback. In exchange for... Um, for nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, he said he even provided everyone with growlers. Yeah. Nice. And then another couple years later, he got a random message on Facebook from John asking if he had ever considered brewing professionally. And if he were to open a brewery, what would it be like? What types of beers would he make? Stuff like that. 
the ideals lined up well enough that he decided to humor John and Chad and met them for a meeting in North Austin in January of 2014. He thought everyone and their brother was opening breweries, and so he went along, but didn't offer any commitments until he got further along. So he started brewing their pilots to share with potential investors and for them to drink themselves. Then something crazy happened. A little bit from column A, a little bit from yeah, column B. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, if nobody else will drink it, I'll drink Anyway. Yeah. Then John left his lucrative job a week before his second son was born. He thought John was either, either, well, these are, this is, quote, fucking insane, <laughs> or he was devoted to a level that I had not realized. <laughs> so it was then that Zach realized he needed to prepare for his own graceful exit from his current employer. So at the end of November 2014, they were all jobless. Uh, He says, self-employed with no revenue. (laughs) Same thing. Uh, Yeah, pretty pretty much. Yeah, they were all jobless and praying they didn't fuck it up too much. So then they finally opened March 11, 2015, and they didn't have any of their own beer until that April. But they did it. They opened. He says they had an awesome crew, and after a week of soft openings, they were fully opened. Their starting lineup included Trail Runner Golden Ale. He says still their best seller to this day. Drink Well Red Ale, which is now retired and replaced by their Wonder Boy Hef. Mm-hmm. Hap Slappy IPA, which is a close second to Trail Runner. Brushy Creek Brown Ale, recently replaced at the start of 2019, which last time I was there, they had it. I was like, dang, I could have tried it. But now I don't get to. Anyway, so, but that was replaced with... Brown's a style that you don't see that... Often year mm-hmm. round, yeah. Autumn, that's true. Yeah, autumn, fall, or autumn and well, maybe winter. they'll make it seasonal. I don't know. But that was replaced with Cuerno Rojo Mexican Vienna Lager, mm. and House United Coffee Milk Stout is their flagship. That's what I was told. So yeah, it has the cold brew coffee that they're known for. Has the uh, yeah, the it's the mixture of the for. two sides. Yeah. yeah, which is I, I believe when they wanted to open, that was like the. The idea from the beginning to do coffee and beer. How does that work in Texas? Well, you brew the coffee and then... Oh, <laughs> oh you still have to brew the coffee? Yeah. No, no. Uh, no, but isn't there some sort of law that if you're going to be open certain hours of the day, that a certain portion of the revenue has to come from non-alcohol sales? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I've heard that, but I'm, I can't be certain. Was like, if, sure. if you're a coffee house, I assume that uh, you know if you're going to be open in the morning, there's going to be a lot you of beer to, sales. So yeah. it's like you're getting like the the pastries and that kind of stuff. Well, you can't sell it before noon. Can't, right? We can't sell beer. Yeah, but if you're you, going to you, be you, open you, all day, you can. yeah, you there can is, at restaurants and stuff. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, so it's like it's one of those things. Like and the way that their whole taste, tasting, I don't know what you really their, their coffee house. Yeah, is coffee set up. house. <laughs> coffee house slash pub yeah for for the sake of this conversation it's a coffee house yeah <laughs> it's like it's all one place like the, mm-hmm. the taps are over on one side yeah. so i guess over you to the left close and you come in. Yeah. yeah but uh um like there's a whole area off to the right that's there it's yeah like, so I, you could really run it as a right a proper restaurant which they oh do yeah have. they do have like sandwiches and stuff they throughout do. the day yeah. too so just curious yeah i don't know i'll have to look into that maybe or there's so or many weird Texas that I will laws. And yeah. Never look into it. No. No. But yeah, that is true. There are weird laws. But so yeah. Zach, good stuff. I'm enjoying this beer. Yeah. I've enjoyed a lot of your beers, but this is <laughs> this is delicious. Oh, this is man. the first time I've had this. It gets even more roasty. I, oh, I, I'm still I not know. noticing the roastiness. So I don't know, man. I'm noticing more of the sweetness. Because I drink I drink a lot of like really big, bold stouts, and this one. Yeah. It's it's very very soft for a stout. That's what I that's what I really like about it. Yeah. You know what I learned the other day? No. You know what the difference between a porter what? and a stout is? Yes. What? What? No. You what? Tell me, you tell me. What's no. The, what? What's the difference between a porter and a stout? You don't know. No. I what? Do. What's what? the difference? I don't know. Nothing. Plums. <laughs> plums. Get your plums right here. Mm. No, it's a the porter is kind of a variant of a yeah. stout. It's like it's. There's no definable definition between a porter and a stout. I think we might have covered that in our second episode. I don't remember. I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a, it's been a year. <laughs> I, I've drank a while since, since I've slept since then. Yeah. I've <laughs> drank and slept since then. It's been a while since we've done a porter. It's been a while since we've done a porter. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's like 
you can have some really heavy porters and you can have some really soft stouts. No, uh, that's true. They, yeah. they really can overlap and Hazy go area. into. Yeah. 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 Uh, but there's also robust stouts, which according to the BJCP, separate guidelines, separate classification, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this beer. I'm going to end up three beers in pretty quick. I expected more people to be here, so I did buy three <laughs> growlers. Yeah. Worth. We'll go through one. two for sure. Yeah. So about the House United, House United Coffee Milk Stout. It's named such because it brings together the two sides of the business, coffee and beer. They were the first brewery roastery under the same roof in the state. Really? Yeah. That's, yeah apparently. That is surprising. Yeah, they wanted a rich, coffee-forward, yet approachable beer that combined the two sides of their business seamlessly. They wound up with a 4.7% ABV oatmeal milk stout with a heavy dose of lactose and coffee added in the form of house-brewed cold brew and house-roasted coffee at different stages in the, of the brewing process. I think it's very well integrated, too. And you can notice the heavy lactose because that milk sugar. Yeah. Really, it's, I think it's that sweetness you get on the nose. Yeah. You do get the, the lactose in there. I think that's what makes it so drinkable, really. It's super smooth. It really is yeah that smooths it out fills out the body and everything i mean if you're into cold brew coffee and you want a little buzz in the morning that's not <laughs> caffeinated yeah just dump a little milk in here if you need a little sugar or if you need a little uh, sweetener oh man mm -hmm. this is good stuff wake up and get drunk all over yeah. again clint would probably hate it well it's beer it tastes like a pickle uh, yeah i know right clint does hate beer right so this would be up tony's alley though too yeah it's tough with two people. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of quiet time. Yeah, I'm trying to drink. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know. And fill the space. Like, what? What do we do? Like, I, got I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember the last time that we recorded together. No, I, yeah, I, I, I remember the last time we yeah. recorded together. I literally don't, don't remember, remember recording I, the last yeah. time we recorded together. Oh, man. I mean, I get to that relive was... it any, any time that I want to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's what Johnny Carson always did, right? I don't know. Like. Before, during, what was in that coffee mug? It's bourbon. <laughs> Just bourbon. Just bourbon. It's a bourbon mug. Yeah. I mean, threebeersin.com. It's yeah. like checking out that podcast. You got that episode up there. <laughs> late nights it with was, Ross and Cutter. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was very late. <laughs> I think we finished at 4 a.m. That would explain a lot. Because we, we drank before we went to go drink some more. Yeah. And then we came back. And then we drank some more yeah. while we recorded. Yes. Yeah, that was well, still a good it, beer. Because that when, beer when is, was so good. When is batch two of the uh, Texas Highlander coming out? Oh, I know. It's it's taking a lot longer than I was hoping. Why is that? Because we used up all the flavor in the first batch, I oh, guess. Oh, that makes sense. It does make so, sense. So, yeah, it's, it's getting a little bit of the flavor, but not like the first batch where it was like, Bam! Flavor. We need, to, uh, we need to invest in uh, some barrels for that whenever we do it. Yeah. It might not be a two-time-a-year thing like uh, <laughs> like we're doing right now. But yeah. So, like, uh, I know that Garrison Brothers sells their barrels. They do. Because, I mean, bourbon you can only use once. A lot so. of people, yeah. Legally. Maybe we can also look at some other local uh, distillers, see if yeah. uh, they'll be willing to sell barrels. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they would. There's, you know, Balcones. Is that... They're not local. local. They're Waco, but that's close oh, okay. enough. But uh, I know and that then Treaty, Treaty Oak Treaty has Treaty Oak, a, yeah. But I know that Treaty Oak probably uses theirs for other things because they, mm -hmm. they don't just make bourbon. Right. I know Garrison Brother literally just makes bourbon. Yeah. But they don't even – they don't sell any other product than bourbon. And so they – once they use the barrels, they just get rid of them. Right. Yeah. You but got it. I mean, you, what do you, you can't, get? You can reuse barrels for other can't. things, mm -hmm. just not for bourbon. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, it would it not be bourbon? It's or is it not. just it would they just, be just not allowed to? Okay. Yeah, bourbon. Literally, one of the stipulations has to be it's in new charred. Oak. Right. Right. It's like if it's if it if nothing else can do come a second it. use barrel. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Then it's just a bourbon mash, and then it's just whiskey. Okay. Yeah. Whiskey is. Dumb when it comes to regulations, <laughs> like because that barrel's well, still good. I well, know. I mean, you can use we can reuse barrels. Yeah. It's like I mean, what a lot of bourbon places do, sell them to Scotland, and Scotland will reuse the barrels. <laughs> Most of your scotch is, is aged. It's so if you oh. see traditional oak on a label on, uh -huh. on scotch, it's bourbon, oh, bourbon wow. barrels. Okay, yeah, 
That's funny. A lot of your traditional American whiskeys have to be a new American oak. And so after, after it's used once, it's mm-hmm. useless to them, essentially. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just taking off. <laughs> so, yeah. What else? What, 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 uh, what's coming from the brewery Del Ross? Tomorrow I'll be brewing our American wheat. Without the peaches? Without peaches. Oh. With Not the, the Taika Waititi? Yeah, it is that, but without the peaches. Oh, you're saying you're using the same recipe, just not doing the peaches? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. It's American wheat, uh, New Zealand hops, and Nordic yeast. There you go. I, I got a little bit a different species of yeast, same, still Kawaik or Kavik, if that's how you want to pronounce it, if you want to pronounce it incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the yeast, it's supposed to provide a lot of stone fruit, a lot of apricot flavor on its own. So, well, that, well, I mean, that, that's what... Uh, but we'll see. It was supposed to do that from the on the first batch, right? Yeah, but this one is a lot more. You ferment it at 90 degrees, and it's supposed to release all those all those esters for you. Sound really yeah. excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am, and it's a lot of work, but yeah, I'll try to do it. It's a labor of love. Get up early in the in the morning to start brewing. But uh, but Redhorn, it's like another good place to go up there in Cedar Park. Now it's off the beaten path a little bit. It is a bit. So it's behind the C, the old CVS, and you can tell it's a CVS just because. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember. But they got a nice little patio. Got a nice little uh, little sidewalk that you can sit there too. Mm-hmm. They're paninis. I didn't get one while I was there because I, I I literally drove up there, picked up beer, had a beer, and then yeah. left. Their paninis looked really good, though. You a panini guy? Yeah, man. It's a sandwich. Any sandwich. Any place that they make sandwiches. Any sandwich. I'm a... Well, okay. Maybe not. But... Shit sandwich. Knuckle no, sandwich. I can't <laughs> say that. That's, That's not real, is it? You can't print that. My bad. Yeah. Shice uh, sandwich. There you go. <laughs> you want to be German about it. Earl of Sandwich. That's a good place. They make some good sandwiches. Mm, I've not been there. Where's it? There's one in Vegas. Actually, right. there's a couple in Vegas. They make some good sandwiches. Mm. You ever been to uh, Alvin Ord's down in uh, San Marcos? No. Oh, that's a good sandwich. Yeah? Oh, yeah. There's a little local place down the road here, uh, Subway. <laughs> any meat you want, as long as it's ham or salami and pepperoni. Turkey. Yeah, like five dollar foot longs, six dollar foot longs. No. Yeah, not five anymore. Inflation, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, but Alvin Ord's is pretty much like the Schlotskys before Schlotskys became corporate. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh dang, it's delicious. And uh, San Marcos is starting to uh, do some distilling and some brewing. What's in San Marcos? What what are they doing there? Uh, I believe that. It, hops and grain? Did they moved down there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they hops and grain the second down there. place down there. Um, there's a, there's a distillery down there too that's starting to gain some traction. Oh man, Jack Daniels. <laughs> that's always gained some traction. But there's a, there's like a local distillery there too. I can't think of the name of it right now. It's gonna bug the hell out of me now. TX. Nope. It's like gut gut wrench or something like that. That doesn't sound good. I know. It's something something weird. Cut back? No, it's not cut back. Cut and shoot. Shiner. Um, it's gonna it's gonna pop up here, and I'm gonna know it. Like, uh-huh. Oh wait, Clint has no service in this. <laughs> oh well, they have a distillery down there too now. Okay. But yeah. uh, check out San Marcos, home go. of the Bobcats. That's where Eat I graduated them up cats. from. Eat them up, cats. Clint, Clint, Joel, and I all graduated South from there. Southwest Texas State. Teachers uh, College. I wish. Normal college. We're not that okay. old. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you ever go to college, Russ? Yeah, I went there. So you went to Southwest? It was or? a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. I took a, I took a campus tour. I was just there for the beer at George's. Wimberley's got some good stuff out there in the middle of nowhere, too. Yeah. They got uh, a lot of wineries there, too. Yeah. Right? Them, uh, Dripping Springs is not oh, yeah. only a brewery capital, but I mean, mm. not a brewery capital, but they yeah. got a lot of breweries out there. Yeah, they got Jester King, Twisted X, Family Bidness, the cool kids call it, Suds Monkey, Vista, which is actually Driftwood, Last Stand. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. Orf. That is that is not. That is that is next to uh, 
So. In the, near Independence. Near Skull Mechanics and near St. Elmo's. It's all, like, right there. Okay. Yeah. 71? Yeah. Okay. And you can just hit them all as you go, as you go on your way to Dripping Springs, one after another. And then 512 is at the end down there. I just wish there was, like, a train line that just put every, <laughs> everything, just put everything in a line. Yeah. Like, like the 71 Brewery Tour and just... Train stop. Yeah. Long 71. That would uh, that would be a good train ride. So then you'd have one so you have one going north from downtown. Yeah. Or hell, you could just have one right there on 35. Just mm-hmm. like, oh, train stop here, there get on, go. go north. But nope. Can't have any public transportation in Texas. That makes sense. No. They're really pushing that train line for the next few years, though. Yeah. It's Do not, it then. It, it's not going to go anywhere. No. But they're real like Texas legislation's really trying to push that. Yeah. So get out of your fucking cars and yeah. <laughs> take literally anything else. The bus, the train, just don't take your car. Yeah. If there was a train that was able to get me to work in less than an hour, I'd yeah. probably do it. Oh, I'd do it too. No way. Yeah. Just the the stark difference going south on thirty five between 6.55 and uh-huh. 7 o'clock. Oh, God. Five minutes can yeah. make 45 minutes of your commute. Mm-hmm. Like, it's oh, yeah, stupid. And I have a seven-year-old who refuses to get out of bed. Oh, uh, just... yeah. Me too. Wait, no. No, you I, don't. I don't. No, you don't. <laughs> that, I, that's, that's just me refusing to get out of bed. Do I really need this job? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. These guys aren't on the train, though, because they're too far north. Whitestone's literally right off the train. Like they're, like yeah. They're, I think their patio, but you can see the train. Yeah. You can touch the train almost from their patio. Yeah. Uh, is that the same train though? I mean, yeah. I know that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it literally is. It's the one okay. that goes all the way down to okay. downtown. Yeah. yeah. Because that is the exact same. Because there's only one train. Yeah. Uh, but there's also the beer train. Well, I guess it's, it's only a beer train every quarter. Is that the red line? But it's no, it's not the red line. It's just it's like a r- old timey looking train. But they run north to like Bertram, or like Burnett, something like that. Okay. And then they do sometimes they'll do I th- think the they do beer train? dinner. It's not really. It's just a train. They do a beer train event. Which is sponsored by somebody. Like when we went to Whitestone, they had one coming up sponsored by Redhorn. So you just get to drink Redhorn on the trip all the way. Well, that's pretty they, they, awesome. All the way there and back. And uh, Whitestone said they do it sometimes. But, and then they have the Thomas the Tank Engine train, which is. I have seen that. Yeah. It's the same thing. I think they just dress one up and then the other one yeah. they don't. So. One of my favorite episodes, uh, George Carlin. Oh, yeah, my, my one of my favorite George Carlin skits is when he says "fuck the children." <laughs> it's all like, and he's like, and this is coming from Mister Conductor because yeah. he was Mister Conductor <laughs> for like two seasons. Shining or Time Station, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's on. Uh, which it it took. It's so like last year sometime. I was like, wait a second. Shining Time Station was Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. What the hell? It's like, I, for some reason in my mind, they were like two completely separate nope. things. Like, Same thing. It's like, wait a second. Uh, it was, it was kind of like my, damn. my, my, uh, epitome, like, or, uh, epiphany. Epiphany. Yeah, yeah. my bad. My epiphany, yeah. uh, of when Chances George Carlin. Epiphany. <laughs> no. George Carlin, it's all like, I remember seeing one of his stand ups when I was in like college. Yeah. I was like, that guy looks like, really wait, fucking yeah. familiar. <laughs> and then he, and then I hear that and I was like, oh my God, my world just got <laughs> blown to smithereens. Like, this is good from Mr. Conductor. It's like, uh, okay. got him. I know, he, I know where he's from now. Son of a bitch. It's been in so much. Oh, man. A special visitor had arrived and was now the center of attention. Just then, Gordon arrived. <laughs> said Gordon. Fucking foreigners. I miss that man. He's a yeah. fucking oh, genius. Yeah. yeah. I loved his little, just his tiny little role in uh, Jay and Silent Bob, like Strike Back. I don't remember. He was the hitchhiker. I was oh, telling yeah? him about the, 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 the code or the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember. 
Oh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, man. What's a trouser snake? <laughs> Would you Shannon, fuck a sheep? Shannon Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. It's like Goodwill Hunting 2. <laughs> <laughs> hunting season. Oh, man. Ben Affleck had like two or three different roles in that movie. Oh, that yeah. Was he was, that was pretty good. I liked that. Yeah, and they had people show up from other movies. Right. Like James Jason Vanderbeek. Lee yeah, was Jay- Jay- James Vanderbeek, yeah. I don't want your life. He was Jay. Yeah. No, he, he was, was yeah, he was Jay. Was he? Okay. And then uh um oh, Jason Biggs. Yeah, Jason Biggs was uh was Silent, Silent Bob. Bob, yeah. <laughs> oh, we found another dead prostitute. Oh, it wasn't me this time. It was no it was, uh, Ben Affleck. Moon Raper. Oh, good times, good times. Yeah. I wonder why. Uh, I want to know what Ben Affleck doesn't take him seriously as a as an actor. That's not my Batman. Uh, it's not my Batman either. But I saw the movie. Uh huh. I didn't hate it. It mm. wasn't great. I'll give you that. I didn't hate it though. The part that I liked was the dream sequence. Yeah, so- where it was Batman versus actually actually Batman versus Superman. Right. Where Superman. It, He's basically Nazis, and they were yeah. the freedom fighters fighting. Yeah. But that was only like five minutes of the movie. But I thought that was really cool. The potential's there, and everybody hated Whoa. all of that. So and that yeah. shit's gone. Like, yeah, no, you just don't even don't even dream about it now because that shit's gone. There's Shazam now. I haven't seen Shazam that. and Wonder Woman. I need to see it. Do you like Aquaman? Did you see Aquaman? <sighs> Fucking awful, man. They should have called it Awful Man. Awful Man. It wasn't that great. That's why I, I talked through the whole movie. Oh, good. I mean, that's if, if I know it's going to be ridiculous. watching the movie. And then, the, like, the second half was just CGI the whole time. It's like, what the fuck? It's just, uh, I don't know. Uh. Did, did, you, did you like the fact that they kind of ignored a lot of stuff from uh, Justice League? Justice League. Did they really? I mean, in Justice Injustice League. Well, he didn't do anything in Justice League anyway, so. In Justice League, he, sort of he had did, already kind of become he Aquaman. He was famous in, yeah, no, that's true, I guess, yeah. That's all I, and this was supposed to take place after that. Yeah, and I think they even talked about Steppenwolf, didn't they? Or? Yes, yeah. yes, they did. Yeah, in, uh, And then also in Justice League, they had to create a bubble so they could talk normally. Yeah. But then James Wan was like, no, fuck that. They're going to talk underwater. (laughs) (laughs) I did find it somewhat strange that I I felt like they could almost, like he could almost swim faster than the ships that they were like driving through the water, if you will. Seemed that way, yeah. It's like most oftentimes like, hmm. Why do they have Yeah. (laughs) Why? Why? Well, he's Aquaman. He's king of the sea there. I mean, maybe that gives him... Swimming powers, I don't know. Makes him able to swim faster. I tell you what, though, Jason Momoa, he's pretty charismatic. He is, but he can't, he can't save Aquaman. You don't think so? Not that movie. Did were you watching the same movie I was? Because no, it's enjoyable. Uh, It's enjoyable. uh, Yeah, but you're a nerd. Your mom's a nerd. Not in that way. But oh. yeah, she's a nerd. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh Keep her out of the garage. Wonder Woman's getting a second movie. Yeah. Nineteen eighty four. You don't think this one's gonna get a second one? I wouldn't think so. I don't think it did well enough. I don't think they're trying to make movies to keep stories going. I think they're only making like sequels for stuff that did well, so <laughs> I'm I like actually, they're, I, I they're, don't think they're. I they're feel, in like, I, feel to, like, I, I don't think they're in it to tell the story. I feel like right they now. were. I feel like originally DC set out to do everything that Marvel did. Yeah, they had set ten no, years, it, it, ten years prior. Yeah, into it about really three feels years. that way. Yeah, they tried to do it in about that. Yeah, they it's, all cram it all in because before Avengers, they you had this gradual build up. You had Iron Man. You had even Iron Man Two was still before. The, Captain America, and then then you had the or yeah, you built the you, Avengers. and then you had Thor's yeah. Thor, I guess. Before you built, that. yeah, you built the Avengers, you built it up, and, and then you had the Avengers. to a logical like, yeah, and like, oh, I know this person. He was in his own movie, and he was in his own movie. So you don't have to tell all the stories all at once in one movie. Yeah. They're just together, yeah, and, and it's they like they did, yeah, they did, they did Man of Steel, which yeah. was a one-off story. Oh man. And then, of steel. and then they were like, 
oh man, like these guys are doing like a lot. Like we should do something into that. And yeah. Then they're like, Batman versus Superman, <laughs> two Titans. Oh man. And then it did not do very well. No. But they had already teased like Justice League in a it. whole bunch right. of stuff. Yeah. It's like, you Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman, Wonder Woman it, yeah. was one of those things that I was really pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I think a lot of people were. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's like the, the kind of DC mishandling of everything was... And, and I, yeah. I, I called it from the get-go. I was like, they're trying to do what Marvel did oh, in yeah. 10 years' time. They're trying to cut it, it down to like yeah. two years. Yeah, like, exactly. I can't force jump. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you yeah. could, but the way you'd have you'd to have do to... it is you'd have to do like all of those like origin stories uh-huh. before you did Batman versus Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd like them to kind of continue the universe, but I think it's too far gone. But I'm a DC lover, yeah. so I hold that hope. I've never been a big fan of Batman's cool. I like the Batman's characters. I like cool. the characters. I don't know. They got some crazy characters. Weren't well, they Marvel to, has some crazy yeah. characters, too. Weren't they supposed to be doing a Blue Beetle movie? When's that? Where's my Blue Beetle movie, man? I would love to see a Blue Beetle movie. Yeah. Which one, though? The one that I knew from the 90s. Yes. <laughs> that's the one I would do, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I would do. Because, like, the new guy, it's like a... Um, they're doing... They're bringing a... a guy Gardner. No, they're, they're bringing... What, what's, the, what's the Netflix series that's coming back? Oh, uh, Heroes of Tomorrow or no, Legends no, no, of Tomorrow? No, no, Legends no, no, no. of the Fall. No, <laughs> River Runs Through. Uh, the the animated one with the, the Titans, Justice, Dark Justice, no, or no, 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 Teen no. Titans, Teen Titans. They had the thing a few. God damn it! It's not Teen Titans. Teen it's... Titans go. Tween Titans. Tween Titans. Young Justice. That's Young what it is. Justice. That's what yeah, I was thinking. That's right. Of. So I forgot all about that. That was a good show, and I'm really glad they're bringing that yeah. back. There was two seasons, and both those seasons were pretty well done. Yeah. But they just didn't have the super following that they uh-huh. were expecting. But it's, I'm glad they're doing a third season finally. Yeah. I never saw it. Superboy, saw... Aqualad, yeah. Miss Martian, right. Kid Flash, Robin. I did like Dark Justice, though, because that had Constantine in it. Well, I liked him. I mean, their animated universe is solid. Yeah, very good. I, no, better than a lot of their movies. I love him. I love Kevin Conroy too. Oh he's yeah, a, he's he, such a he good is Batman. Batman. Yeah, yeah, he is such a good Batman. Like you hear, you hear his voice. Like I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman. Hey, wait, there's Batman. Yeah. Batman's here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, same, he, same with Mark Hamill, really, as the, the Joker. Joker. Yeah, I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no, thank you. I've heard so many different Jokers. Yeah, so I, I know. Yeah, he, he's still, he's still the animated Joker. I, I will give you that. But, uh, um, but your favorite Joker is is the Batman Joker, right? Yeah, fucking Jack Nicholson. No, no, the Batman with the dreadlocks and the. Oh fuck that guy! No, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> I I remember watching it the first time. I was like, "This is the most ridiculous oh, thing I've ever yeah. fucking seen." Yeah, like the Batman wasn't wasn't a terrible show. Uh huh. But it's all like every time I saw the Joker, it was like, "No, it, that's what they try." Capoeira? Was... Who the fuck does capoeira? <laughs> capoeira. Capoeira is the most seductive form of self defense. Fucking the Joker is definitely not oh, my Joker. Is not Joe, Brazilian. He's not doing. Yeah. That makes sense. I didn't know he did capoeira, but that really makes sense now. That's why he was just like. <laughs> A freaking Brazilian. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you look at him. Like, it's like he's very fucking... loose pants and like <laughs> barefoot and st- whatever. I don't know. It's like you can't just walk around Gotham City barefoot. Come on. It's it's a bad idea. That's a terrible idea. All those heroin needles. You walking down them alleys of the projects, man. You are stepping on the dead soldiers. You can't walk down the Baltimore streets without that shit cracking underneath your feet. It's like walking down Hastings Street. <laughs> Looking up in uh, for you the, BC, yeah. People. <laughs> I was yeah. up there in the uh, the 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 grunge of uh, British Columbia. Yes, yes. The Vancouver. Yes, bringing it back. Uh, Walking on fallen soldiers. No, ja- Jack know. Nicholson's Jack Nicholson's my Joker. Yeah. Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? That was. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> just so we're clear. I don't know what the hell that means, but. It's it's provocative. Yeah. Nobody knows what it means. It's like I, I will say, like Kevin Conroy has definitely given me a run for my money on uh-huh. uh, on whether Michael Keaton is my Batman. Oh man, he Kevin wow. Conroy is a solid Batman. Have you, have you ever watched uh, Justice League, like the animated Justice League? No. 
Oh, Jesus. Batman is a giant dick. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he always is when where the Justice League is considered. One of, one of my favorite episodes of the Justice League is, uh, I think it was a two-part episode. Like, one of them was, like, the end of the season. The other one was the beginning. Yeah. And uh, Amanda Waller fucking, like... Sets the Justice League up for failure. Yeah. And, and everybody's like, hey, maybe we are criminals in this and that. We're all going to turn ourselves in until the situation is rectified. Oh, no. And Batman is all like, you do whatever the fuck you want, but I'm not going to be part of that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and Batman they're like, like no, Batman, that. you really need to. It's like, we all we need to do this as a team. He's like, deuce. And he's like, he cuts out of the conversation. Yeah. He's like, that's my Batman right there. He, the anti Captain America. <laughs> right, exactly. He's yeah. like, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. It's all like, but if you guys feel I need to be here, I'll be here. It's like when you need me. Because, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you will need me. Basically, what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got like an alternative plan. Like, he has an alternative plan to like take, take care of everybody. Yeah, like, everybody. You, yeah. Somebody hacks his system and they take all of his stuff. It's like, and they start using those things against uh-huh. him. It's like, it's Batman. He's like, I would never do this unless I felt like you guys were actually being dicks. Like, yeah. but, but clearly, yes, it was my plan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he feels th- – does Batman feel inferior because he doesn't have superpowers? In yes, do? he does. Okay. He yeah. has a giant chip on his shoulder. Yeah. yeah. But – so he has to prove that he's smarter than everybody and he can still beat everybody. No, he, does, he, doesn't, necessarily, he doesn't necessarily have to prove it. Maybe to himself. To himself, yeah. Yeah. But it's one of those things like, hey. Because they don't know he has a way to kill all of them. Right, exactly. Yeah. But like, he look, knows. Yeah. He, he knows. He's the world's greatest detective. Man. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Fuck Sherlock Holmes. It's, it's Batman. <laughs> it's how he figured out it was Clark Kent, Superman. <laughs> I watched a video the other day. It's all like, how many people really know who uh, Bruce Wayne is uh-huh. like in the DC universe? It's like, these are the people that have figured it out. And it's maybe uh-huh. like seven. Yeah. But it's all like the people that actually know. There's like. Pretty much everybody knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. <laughs> well, you can figure it out. Yeah, man. exactly. Follow the money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is that plane going to Wayne Manor? The Batcopter? What's that doing parked at Wayne Manor? <laughs> it, it's not. Whatever. It's this giant cave coming out of Wayne Manor. All these bats doing All these here. bats coming from. <laughs> oh, it's. Wayne Manor. Every time fucking Batman comes, all these bats come out of Wayne Manor. Like, what the fuck is going on? But yeah. You're a beer and a half in. You're halfway there. Yeah. I was getting tougher. I don't know. That roasty, I, it just comes through. It's not super roasty to me, I which, know, is, which I is crazy. I understand, but I'm getting, the more I drink it, the more the roastiness is coming out for me. But then again, I hate coffee, so. You really do hate coffee. I didn't realize that. I'm not a fan. It's okay. What's your morning drink? Uh, water. Peg juice and OJ. Guy. Probably why. Oh. Yeah, OJ's pretty good. I haven't had orange juice in very... Wait, when was the last time I had vodka? Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I haven't had orange juice in a long time. When I'm working on my house, I'm using the screwdriver. <laughs> and calling somebody else to do the housework. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's a tool fit for every job. <laughs> screwdriver and a yeah, phone. There you go. It's like, is it too strong? Add more orange juice. It's too weak. Add, Add more, more vodka. vodka. There you go. Perfect. <sighs> Growler number uh, two. Man, I don't know. Maybe I just can't drink stouts because it's just weighing on me, man. I'm trying to get through the second one. I just love the sound of that. Uh huh. Fuck you, Clint. That's a pretty good pour. <laughs> Even though we're in Clint's house. Yeah. He's gone for Easter down in Houston. Probably drinking yes. Carbach while he's down there. Oh, shit. Actually, he sent, a, he sent a text earlier, said he was drinking High Life. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he's living the High Life down there. While he left all his Michelob Ultra up here. <laughs> Is that the cactus-flavored one? No, yeah. it's the water-flavored one. Oh, man. He's such a man's man. Oh, yeah. A red horn, though. I really want to try some of the other beers. Like yeah. they, they said their most popular one. You said the most popular one was their uh, the Trail Runner. Trail Runner, their Golden Ale. And they have a lager now. Do they? Well, that's what you said. Did I? Yeah, their their new no. Mex- their Mexican lager. That was you. No, me. Yeah. No, I think it was Joel. <laughs> yeah, no. He, Joel, uh, is that you? <laughs> no, Joel's <Okay>. there. <laughs> Joel's there. Barnacles. Cuerno Rojo. 
Mexican Mexican lager. Vienna lager. Yeah. So it's kind of like a Negro Modelo. I'd I'd like that probably. Vienna lager. It's hard not to like a lager, especially oh, yeah. in Texas. Like it's a it's a good it gives a good year round beer. I I find it difficult to drink light lagers now. They just taste. There's so you a can't taste. do roasty malty stouts, but you can't do light lagers. Some are some I can, but there's some. I guess maybe Three. it's just the way they're made. You, some you've been, you've been hanging out with Clint too much. You've they got, changed. They got us. that. They got that band aid flavor now. It's, huh? it's like yeah, well, nobody else can taste it, but I I taste it and it's band aid like, flavor. It's bad. Yeah, like uh, the smell when you open a new box of shoes. Like, I've had a bad Hans Pills. It's like, I can't, I don't think I can drink Hans Pills. But you get butt People check. love it. Well, yeah. As long as they don't have taste buds down there. But. <laughs> as long as they don't have That would be weird. Matt and Jen, that's still something. That, that yeah. Butt checking butt a Hans Pills. Yeah. Butt checking a Hans Pills. Oh, man. That's the way you guys want to go out. Different strokes for different folks. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. Some yeah. some I've had a Light couple loggers, that that haven't stouts. been bad recently. North my Northwest IPL. That's the one she had before we started recording yeah. the other day. You guys wanted coffee, and I was like, "No, nah, just give me beer." I I wanted a beer, but it's all like I really needed to wake up. Yeah, like, so I was like, "I would coffee." I did not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got like, I got to get I don't loose. Need to wake up. I need to be social. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that was my thought. And the guy kind of looked at me like, uh, okay. He expected us all to order beer, and you were the only one. He's like, oh. oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. That makes more sense. I mean, it's a beer podcast. But it was, what, like 9 in the morning or something, so. We were setting up, yeah. <clears throat> Which. That it's... was so much fun. Yeah. Now, God, I, I love recording at the breweries. Like, I liked it. The, the brewers, firstly, they don't really know what to expect no, when we sit yeah. down. But getting them to open up. So, yeah, oh, it, man. It, it can be rough in the beginning, but then, you know. Once it gets going, after a few minutes, like, oh, it's it's going to be like this now. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, I got it. We yeah. kind of let them set the tone. It's like, all right, where are your boundaries? Uh-huh. So we'll take over for a little bit yeah. and getting them back in. Right. Which is kind of why I thought about contacting Lazarus and like, hey, we want to record and see what you guys are all about. But I don't think they would like that. <laughs> I But I don't know the people at Lazarus if they would be. Like, who knows to, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, it's it's always it's always funny like just one of my favorite memories was texas yeast labs like when they came yeah they were just like we 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 don't know what we're doing yeah no <laughs> like, they knew what that, they were doing yeah but it's all like, we're, we're, it's like how are we gonna make this last that was a really great hour. episode yeah, that was a really great, great two uh, episodes yeah great yeah experience but i mean we've been in contact with blacklands is that yeah. something that's possibly mm. going to happen in the future? I'm sure it'll happen as soon as we want it to happen. That's really. that's what I like to they do. They seem really open to talking to us. It's like And I I've been I've been curious about what they're doing up there for a while. And and to me and to me from someone who doesn't homebrew, yeah. I, I I come over and I watch you guys occasionally, uh-huh. but it's a we love going to the breweries and talking to everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's all like, these guys are the behind-the-scenes right. people to yeah. those guys. This is, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's, uh, it's, it's like these are, these guys are making the stuff that the other guys use to make the, the stuff that you're drinking, yeah. And so. that, that to me, is impressive. It's like, it's just like the just, building block. It's like a person making a single Lego or something. Yeah, I don't know. You, you know. You know that those people kind of know what they're doing. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, they obviously know what they're doing for, yeah. their, for their stuff. Oh, yeah. But it's like they may not necessarily homebrew themselves. You yeah. assume that they do. Yeah. But it's all they're like, involved in beer. Right, and, exactly. It's all like, but, yeah. but they're like, this is what we want to do. This is our yeah. passion. Like using, yeah. using this stuff to make good beer yeah. so that people – are much more experienced and know much more Making about what they're doing. Making good stuff to make good beer. Yeah. It's like, but yeah, it's like the the yeast, the malts. It's all like yeah. that. That's those are the big building blocks. Maybe we can talk to a water guy <laughs> <laughs> later water on down the road. <laughs> Get all of the Austin all, water. Yeah. Hey, what do you you homebrew? Like, oh no. Oh, <laughs> well you should. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's the water plant down. <laughs> Oh, so this is chlorine. LCRA. Okay. We'll talk to LCRA. <laughs> there you go. Uh, everybody uses your water. It's like, yeah. what do you know about home brewing? <laughs> I just watched the gauges. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks for coming on. <laughs> oh, and that's the episode. No. But and yeah, now yeah. we're recording. That would be. Oh, man. Yeah. And if we had any hop farmers in Austin. We didn't really talk about the, the hop farm vermin down up, up in Dallas. There was, uh, there was a growing, sizable hop farm up yeah, in Dallas. Pretty, pretty sizable indoor growing, I think. Yeah, I think, I think it was all indoor. Grow lights and everything. Yeah, and some dirty teens broke in and, and trashed everything, threw like, a bunch of equipment into giant water vats that they had there, broke like all their grow lights and everything. I think they said it was $60,000 worth of damage. But pretty much irreparable. Pretty, yeah, pretty. they have to rebuild from the bottom because... Also, all their plants that they had been growing, they ripped them all out of the ground. And they dried up. And yeah, so they dried up pretty quickly because hops need a lot of water to survive. Yes, you have to. They thrive in like, moist climates. Yeah, exactly. Like, so they basically have to get new plants and new lights, and new equipment, new everything. But uh, luckily, they said they they will try to rebuild that's, instead of just that's good news. Instead of just you know turning their back on the thing. Maybe we can get an interview with them. I would like to. I would like to get all Texas hops because I want to eventually get some Blacklands malts, some wild yeast out here, uh, cultivate our cultivate our own yeast from out in the least, backyard. Get, get some uh, from uh, Texas uh, yeast lab. Oh yeah, we could get yeah we could get yeast from Texas yeast lab and. Texas hops and then make a, a smash IPA. Get a call it get, Texas Smash. Texas Smash. We can get uh, Kevin Fowler to do a little uh, do a little jig for it. I mean, yeah. he, he's call it 100 percent Texan because <laughs> uh, he's got a song already. Does he? Yeah, you and your Put Kevin him on the Fowler. I, lo- I like Kevin I don't Fowler. Know. We, he is redneck as hell. We can all we like, can give him a beer. Yeah. We'll we'll do we'll do do a red ale, redneck ale. Ooh, um, I like it. Uh, it might already exist. I don't know. I'm sure it does. But <laughs> not with Kevin Fowler on the can. <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah, he does Benny Boyd commercials. <laughs> Two beers oh, in. Oh, roasty. You keep saying that. I, I I get milky sweet is what I get. I know. Because you love really strong coffee. I do like really strong coffee. That is true. So if you Black, love coffee, this is your beer. Well, I do I do think it's a really interesting way to go about things, like doing a coffee house and a brewery. Yeah. No, it's really cool. And it's laid back like a coffee house, but also a brewery, which a lot of breweries are pretty laid back already. So A lot of coffee not houses are super. I feel like it's more social than a coffee house, though. I could see that. I could see that. It's really a unique place. Maybe it's not that unique. It's cool. It's a cool place. I, would I like say, it. I would say it's more brewery than coffee house. But yeah. I went on a when are we a Friday? I try not Friday to go evening, to many Friday afternoon. Houses, so yeah. You you strike it, me as someone who hangs out at coffee houses all the it, time. It actually reminds me of. Now that I think about it, it kind of reminds me of Brutorium a little bit. I've not been down there. What? I want to go to a lot of these things, yeah. but it's like my schedule is just fucking terrible. Yeah. I mean, it is absolutely terrible. Mm. It's, it's hard for me to get the stuff. So, yeah. fans, if you love me. He's not going to be I, there. I, I'm probably not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Public appearances. <laughs> so I'll try. I, I, I do my damnedest, but yeah. it's all like, I got so many priorities. Like, I love doing this show. Yeah. It's, I love showing up like on a weekly basis doing this show. <laughs> We try to schedule it around. Yeah, you, doing you, doing public man. appearances. Like if it's not on a Sunday, like uh, it's really we, hard for we, me. Yeah, we try. I try. I try to get uh, breweries. If we're doing a brewery, I try to do it on a Sunday so that's, everybody that's can be that's there. That's the best time to do it because yeah. like, I, I love I love doing it. But it's on it until until we get syndicated. People start paying <laughs> us to do this shit. It's like it's. Oh, I got to make a living, that man. Would be that would be nice. Even a dollar. Someone asked me the other day if I was syndicated. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> it's it's such a such a niche thing. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, no, nobody in Washington cares about Texas. This, beer. this is like a this is like a two a.m. like yeah. radio show, like in some podunk town. If like, I got paid to be on the radio at two a.m., I'd be there. 
Yeah. Damn, I right. do it. Talking about beer and drinking beer. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, who yeah. wouldn't? Yeah, I'm playing uh, some some music. Like, Instead, hey, hey, everybody. Uh, remember the drifters? <laughs> Oh, when the sun beats down and burns the tar up on the roof. No, (laughs) that's not the drifters. Sitting on the dock of the bay. Ross, anyway. that was good. That was that was that All was right. nice. Nice falsetto. All right. Do you have your third one? On your third. I'm one. on my third one. Yeah. I can't chug it. I could. I can't. Okay. Good for you. Brag about it. I'm not bragging about it. It's like this is. It's so good. It's just sweet enough that it uh-huh. cancels the roasty to me. Yeah. It's like I. Th- 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 for coffee, this would be too sweet for me. It's got just cover the right up balance. All that coffee flavor. See, I don't drink coffee for enjoyment. I don't. I don't. I'm not that type of guy. I drink it because it's all like I need something warm and in my body. Uh-huh. I'm, not a, I'm not a cold brew. Gross. Ooh, wow! When you put it that way, yeah, my bad. <laughs> that was my bad. <laughs> Scratch heads. Strike that. Reverse it. I need something warm and uh, caffeinated in my gullet. My oof. that. Oh, caffeinated. Okay. Is that better? Is that be- uh, that's a little bit better. I think. I think Mike Casket would have something to say. He probably would. He wouldn't have. Let, he wouldn't let that first one. Say. No. Ugh, I'd probably go on for anyway. Anyway, <laughs> for a while about it. Oh, so you've met Mike? <laughs> I've I've heard something. <laughs> so yeah. I'm almost. Oh wait. Uh-huh. Mm. Three beers in. Yeah. Three and a tad in, but because I just cleared, cut off the, the yeah. second, the first yeah, growler, the growler before the I did this growler. one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my thoughts All while right. you finish the last half of your beer. Trying. Uh, Talk one. Slow. Solid one. Like this is, like I said, I wouldn't replace it with coffee, but like if I was to replace it with coffee, yeah. it would make a solid replacement. It's light for a stout. Like most people would probably consider it a porter with Without knowing any different, yeah. as we discussed slightly earlier, mm-hmm. but um, sweeter. It has those roasty notes that you that you talk about, but yeah. I don't get them until the finish. But even then, the sweetness is still lingering for me, so it's not like super roasty. Yeah, I get the sweetness as well. But uh, uh, that's what I really like about it. The low ABV makes it really, to me, sessionable. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I could drink this all day long. Probably a bold statement to make. Uh oh. Here we go. But after a golf round, <laughs> I do like to drink a Guinness. Ugh. I could uh, I could easily Maybe, replace I that. I, I would actually to. probably prefer to have this than Guinness because yeah. Guinness has that weight to it. That just it like, does. I, I like Guinness. It's got that sweet roasty note to yeah. it. But this one, the, the dry sweetness Irish of it. Stout. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy this beer. Yeah. Okay. It's like, I I believe that it's a kind of a base for a lot of their. Like heavier stouts, oh, and yeah. Everything. No, I, I, no, I'm, I can see that, but uh, but this is this is really good. I like to have like this is this is your flagship, yeah. You did a solid flagship beer, actually. Yeah, now that you mention it, I'm getting some of the some subliminal dreams in this, you know, a little bit. I yeah. can see where it, I know it, I'm sure it's not the same recipe, but I can see where that would come from this a little bit, yeah, yeah. I feel like this is sweeter than the subliminal dreams. Oh yeah, oh definitely. Which so I, I, exp- I, which I was expecting the subliminal dreams to be a <laughs> lot sweeter. I expected milk and sugar from yeah, uh, from so subliminal did I. dreams. Yeah, yeah. Like almost like a blonde stout. I had my first oh, blonde stout oh, not too long ago. Yeah, me too. I had a uh, a couple months ago. I had the lone pint, which it was necked Rupert. It's uh, it means servant Rupert. It's German. You know, nobody understands. <laughs> but it has to do with, like, Black Peter or, you know, Father Christmas really in uh, in Germany. But anyway, it was really good because I would, ooh, I would love one of those right now. Because it's, I don't know if it's lighter, but it feels lighter. And it's got a whole bunch of, like, that vanilla and chocolatey without a lot of the roast. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's which like- was really 
Really the, amazing. The first one I had was Untitled Arts. Uh-huh. Coconut cream pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, you sent a picture. It of was that. The, their their blonde stuff. It was yeah. the strangest thing I've ever. I, yeah. I bought it because it said coconut. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm in on. I'm in. I'm all in on coconut. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, apparently, Chance hates coconut now. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Which he says he's hated forever, but yeah, it's like, what? Yeah, it's chance. What about the Coco and Yeho? That's coconut? Yeah. yeah. That's a good uh, that, The hot fusion. Yeah. That's pretty good stuff, too. 8.999%. That, that, that was my first blonde stout. It, when I poured it, I was all like, this is Weird. strange. Yeah. Because it's like a super thick. Thick blonde. Yes. Ex- yeah, exactly. When when I uh, well, I had it on draft and it was, yes, it was blonde, but it also looked like had a core of chocolate in the middle almost. Like yeah, it was, it it was, was just was... thick. Like you couldn't see through it. It no. was hazier than a hazy IPA or something like that. It was, it was hazy. Like, but not like the that like weak orange juice kind of look. But it, it like, was a, like it was like a, like it was golden, like a light. Like, it was like a light. Doppelblur. I could see that. As, as, yeah. the, way, as, the, way, as the way I could see it in my head. But as I, I poured it and I was like, this is looking weird. Yeah. And I think I've, I've talked about my beef with pint cans. Oh, uh, here we go. For some, for some reason, 12 ounces is a perfect amount, is a perfect amount yeah. for most beers. Like pint cans. Uh-huh. I can drink pint bottles. I can drink pint pours yeah. in a glass. Well, yeah, pint pours. Yeah. But of for some reason, Cans. Every time, yeah, every time I a can pint can is is put in front of me, I'm like, twelve ounces. I'm like, I'm all in. The last four ounces, is like, I don't know about this. Like, I can't finish this last four ounces. Like, when when I see a pint can of Dr Pepper, I'm all about that. It's like, but <laughs> how often do you see a pint can of Dr Pepper? Uh, anytime I'm at CVS. Seriously? <laughs> Are you fucking it's kidding like, me? They have a like, pint can like of Dr Pepper. It's like a uh, oh, I'll, I'll get one of them tall boys. <laughs> I've seen the eight ounce can, little oh, fucking yeah. squatty ass can. Yeah. Like, is it just basically yeah. two of those, or is yeah. it? It's no, it it's a pint like, can. It, it, yeah, it's a pint can. It's like what? But yeah, the, the thing that, that I don't like is when they have them in pints, they sell them in four packs. I'm not all about the four pack, man. Give me a six pack. I don't know. Now, now I don't know. When, Maybe when, it's weird. But when I, I go to North by Northwest tomorrow, I'm picking up a four pack. <laughs> four pack. Yeah, I'm picking up a four pack. Yeah, because that's how they sell IPAs, man. That's how you got to do it. Six, 16 ounce can for I'm going to go to eBay immediately afterwards and go, hey, <laughs> each one of these cans is 20 bucks. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's a li- Because it's a limited run. I approve. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I, I approve, Davis. Yeah. You, you, did, you did good. <laughs> Fly me to the moon, man. All right, Ross, you finished your third beer. Yeah. Took a while. In the beginning, it felt pretty light, but as I was drinking it, it got heavier and heavier. It weighed on me. It was weighing on my soul right now, man. But yeah, it wasn't. It one what, zero. I, I want to. That's what I want to hear. I think it's a great beer, and if you love coffee, it's definitely a one for you. It's probably a zero for me. I got. You. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't order it. They have a ton of other stuff there that I would order before this. Their Trail Runner. I'd try that. Their Querno. Where Mexican Vienna Lager. Yeah. Whatever. It's Cuerno Vienna. Cuerno, Cuerno uh, Rojo. They yeah. what? What I really like about them too, they're a local company, obviously. Yeah. No, oh, totally local. They also go local when they do their barrel aged stuff. Oh uh, yeah. One of their beers they aged in Cooper, uh, Cooper, Cooper tires, Cooper, Cooper family rye barrels. Oh yeah. They're out of Driftwood or uh, or Dripping Springs, one of the two down Makes there. Makes sense. Yeah. But it's there's, all, there's a lot of distilleries. They do there. they do a couple a uh, couple of rye barrel aged stuff. Yeah, so, which I Clint's not a fan. Clint's not here to defend himself either because he's a bitch. <laughs> I got something to add. I use tampons. What? But uh, I love barrel aged stuff. I love bourbon barrel aged stuff. I uh, the other barrels like I don't know tequila, rum, gin. Eh, I mean I'll drink it and I like it like some stuff, but bourbon barrel aged is. That's that's my saying. That's my my favorite. Bourbon barrel aged stouts or just in general, if you're barrel aging. Well, most like, oftentimes, like stouts are bourbon barrel aged. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I've seen gin barrel aged stuff is becoming more yeah, popular I've with seen that. IPAs. Which we where did we, where were we that we tried one of those? 
Oh, uh, Jester King. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah the, they're uh, Viking, they're Viking metal. Yeah. Viking metal. Viking King. Barrel That's right. Yeah. Was it Viking King or Viking metal? Viking metal. Okay. Yeah. You sure. One hundred percent. One hundred. One hundred percent. One. I can't be yeah. more certain than that. <laughs> yeah, you can't be. But, uh, can you? You can uh, prove me wrong. Mike from Pacific Beer Chat, prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was that was in Gin Barrel, but they went full botanical with that. Really. They did. They did. Yeah. So, but uh, um, it came through. It's like there's there's so many things that you're bar- that things are barrel aging that you can't really that you weren't thought of before. Yeah, but uh. Stouts, I think, are still the most popular yeah, as far as yeah, bourbon barrel that. aging. Well, when you're barrel aging, you want it to be a high ABV to fight off bacteria and infection. And no, but you can like do that. high ABV IPA. Yeah, no, that's you can true. Do high ABV. I mean, you do oh, a whole but, bunch of... but barrel aging an IPA, you won't have really much of the hops left when you take it out of there. Yeah, but you can always dry hop it afterwards, can't you? Yeah, you could. That's an idea. But a lot of like, I'm I'm seeing a few. I know. Uh, damn it! Who is it? Circle. Nope, it's not Circle. Um, Anheuser Bush. We just got one in recently. Shoots. Uh, it's a two can thing. Oh, Martin House. No, it's not Martin House. What? It, might be you son of a bitch. Might, the not, salty lady. No, no. Barrel aged salty lady. No, it's a it's a barrel it's a gin barrel Made aged in IPA. Oh. And I can't think of who it is. Yeah, but they're okay. they're in Texas. I know that much. They're up in North Texas. I wanna say I wanna say nine oh three, but I don't think that's right. Uh I haven't huh. But it's like it's like a two pack uh-huh. like a two pack beer for like twenty five bucks, twenty seven bucks, something like yeah. that. It's like it's yeah, because Martin it House sounds and, super good, but at the same time it's like it's two cans for fucking twenty seven dollars. That is pretty like, expensive. Yeah. But uh, like Martin House instead of bombers, they do the two can uh boxes. Car box got an interesting you variety pack out bitch. right now. I know. I'm not usually a car box fan, but they've got a whole bunch of their Hellfighter series out. Mm-hmm. Which is a, uh, I believe it's a barrel aged stout, hmm. but they have a variety pack of four. Yeah, and it's got a, uh, it's got the regular Hellfighter. It's got yeah. a bourbon barrel aged Hellfighter. Oh yeah, it's got a mole. Barrel- yeah, I've seen one of those bar- bourbon barrel aged Hellfighter, and it's got a uh, not um, theirs, but somebody else had a mole, uh, which is basically stout. like a, a a charred chocolate. Charred Is chocolate okay. and spice. I would say Mexican yeah. chocolate. Yeah, yeah, thing. exactly. I'm not huge on Carbock, but yeah. I almost be I almost bought that the other day. I, I was like, about- no, I'm saving up for my fucking <laughs> TBS. Uh. I thought about getting their their uh, brandy barrel aged. I remember that, that brandy. Oh, the Nigel. Brandy, you're a fine girl. Yeah, uh, it was a Nigel. Uh, uh, oh, is it brandy or a fine girl? It was yeah. a barley wine. Yeah, I thought it was. Just aged in brandy barrels. They, uh, they because it was it? their number seventeen. Their number sixteen yeah. is the Nigel. Okay, a, which was a probably time for yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so split decision here on yeah. the on the on the uh, all three beers. I still in. think it's a great beer. It's not for me. Just oh. not three beers in. Uh, would you do? You wouldn't even order it for a regular. You said probably not. I'd I'd order this. They have other stuff there. I would I'd rather have if this is. This is their staple. Like this is their flagship beer. It's all like yeah. definitely check it out. Like for Combines sure the from best from me. Two worlds. If you like, if you like, co- uh, obviously, if you like coffee, you're probably gonna check that place out. It's like the new Fifty Two. When the worlds are colliding. Yeah. If you like coffee and beer, Get like it, why wouldn't you try the first place to do both in the same place? Yeah. Like, uh, they also is, they also roast their own coffee. Yeah, there, that's what so. I'm saying. Like coffee and beer. Like no, but they roast it. They get the raw beans in and they roast it. Got your raw beans right here, Ross. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on uh, Three on Beers In. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but this has been Cutter. And this is Ross. And this has been the podcast. This, this is, is the, the podcast. podcast. Three Beers In is a proud member of the Hopped Up Network. Thanks for sticking around. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, TuneIn, and on the HoppedUpNetwork.com. If you like what you heard, 
rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Three Bears In Podcast, and check out our website, Three Bears In Podcast.com. Three, the number three, Beers In Podcast.com. You can find information about us and the show along with the links to all of our episodes and our really cool merchandise. While you're on our site, you can tell us what you like, what you don't like. And if you don't like us, then why the hell are you still here? You should have turned us off long ago. But if you're just going to listen to us anyway, then you should probably subscribe too. And if you'd like a transcript of our podcast, write down everything that we just said. Sometimes they say like it ain't like it is, but it do. This is Brew Crime, a craft beer and true crime podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Beck. And I'm Nina. And we're your hosts. We pair a true crime story with a craft beer. That Nina will probably hate. Yeah, probably. Whatever. You can find our show on all your favorite podcast apps, and if you can't find it, contact us, and we'll try and change that. We can be found at brewcrime.com, or on Twitter at brewcrime, on Facebook at brewcrime, or if you want to go to our group, it's group slash brewcrime on Facebook, or on Instagram at Pacific Beer Chat. Join us as we discuss the horrible crimes that surround us and try not to giggle.